just looking back a few minutes ago. Left at 482. She goes clear to so Stefanidi with that just that one blemish on an otherwise perfect card. That first failure at 477. The Olympic and world champion very much back on song here. Hello. We're in Zurich with three-time Diamond League pole vault champion Kat Stefanidi and her coach Mitch Creer. And today we're going to join them for a little jump session. I've never vaulted before, but I'm going to have a go to see how one gets into pole vault, how one progresses in pole vault, and also how a champion trains. So let's get to it. Yeah. Just try to move as fast into the pit as you possibly can. Good. Now raise your grip, two fingers. Two three fingers. fingers. Yeah. Okay, so we, ha we need to think about the same thing we were thinking about on the ground drills, that we have to keep the hands above the feet. We can't let everything seek underneath the pole. Do you want to, okay. Yeah. You want to be able to run out of this, essentially, for now, until we start swinging. Better. Okay, three fingers higher. Don't Remember, back. yeah, we want to keep pushing the pole. We never want to hang on the pole. We want to keep pushing the pole. So keep moving the top of the pole up and forward. When did you first pole vault, Kat? When was this? What age were you? What age? Yeah. 11. 11? Yeah. Can you remember the first session? Yeah, I can remember the first one. Because I walked in and everybody was like taking like straight pole jumps, not actually bending the ball. And I was like, oh, this cool looks cool. And I kind of like did it on the first attempt. Okay. So I'll grab the ball here. Yeah. Two big steps back. Okay, start there. It's fine. Right, left. Step back with your right. Your other right. Out. <laughs> right, left. Right, left. Yep. Okay, now let's run into it. Run into it. Remember, <laughs> speed does need to be there at some point. Good. So now let's raise our grip two fists. Okay, remember, the goal is to move the top of the pole that way. How are we going to do that? Jump up and push it. Okay, one fist higher. Is there any particular area you struggled in to begin with? I had to like change my run at the beginning. It's like the first step. You have to be able to run correctly for pole vault before you can pole vault. And I was lucky that they gave me the fundamental. It's, I think everything goes step by step. That's the most important. Then you have to learn how to take off correctly. And then the rest is pretty easy, I would say. Okay, so once I've mastered this, yep. it's done. I think, I think it's time for you to rest now. <laughs> We've seen better days, but he's all right for a, a Scouse football player. He's just scooting down the runway a little bit, but it's all right. His goal is 243 to break Barshim's high jump record. We've got some work to get done, but maybe he can do it. Everything hurts. Back hurts, my arms are tired got a headache, dehydrated, everything is covered in sweat. But I'm having really good fun actually, it's, uh, it's really good to challenge yourself, especially when you've got such good coaches as Mitch and Kat. It feels like there's a lot to think about, but actually there isn't. You're just moving the pole from one angle to the next, and you've got to enjoy the ride. We have, everybody has a little bit of a habit to kind of grab onto it for safety but it's safer to move it, and we move it with long levers. I want you to watch her, her gait 
her stride pattern. She's really putting a lot of vertical force in and you're scooting like you're on a football pitch or running a distance race yeah. and just kind of scooting along and we need vertical force. I would ideally spend six months teaching you how to run yeah. than doing this. So yeah. I don't want to talk about <laughs> fixing that run right now. We're just, this is the difference of what's going on with you and Kat. Okay, that was all right. Let's get back to running. Yeah, okay. I feel like there's a bit of fatigue kicking in, but I can get, yeah, can I can get past that. Ah, there we go. Up a fist. That felt like the best one yet. You took off of the incorrect foot again, but you did have an amazing ability to keep swinging <laughs> through the jump to try to get up there. <laughs> I, just think I mean, of... really it was a, for what you did down here, I'm very impressed with what you did on the ball. <laughs> Clock's still going. So as soon as you do this, you start to appreciate all those little movements that you see you guys doing during competition. Yeah. Even when you make a bar, when you fail, when you're just warming up. Yeah. Just like, just like keeping it like that begins to make sense. Ah! That was better. Yeah, it was better. Do you feel how important this consistency is though? Yeah. Because really, this stuff is all just a result, everything from here on is a result of what's happening here. Yeah, yeah. And one time you really get it, one time you're a little lower, one time you're a little higher, and that's what's important. And that's, I think, why Katerina has so much consistency is because we work very hard to make this as consistent as possible. The feeling, the height, I don't care as much about the distances. For me, it's more about position and how she's coming across. Yes! Yeah.